Hi, this is Jim Hogan, and in this video, we're going to talk about appurtenances. So stay tuned. So what's an appurtenance? Well, this term appurtenance means anything that's attached to the land and transferred along with it. So when you buy and sell real estate, the land is the basic real estate and anything tangible or intangible that is transferred along with it is referred to as an appurtenance. So we have a little diagram here and let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh, that house there, that building, real or personal property? Real property, so it's an appurtenance. If the land is sold, the house is sold. How about the trees behind it? Real property, so that's an appurtenance. How about those cows? Well, they're personal property, so they would not be an appurtenance. How about that pink or purple mine in the background? That's right, it's real estate. Those mineral rights are real property, intangible, but they are real property, therefore an appurtenance. I don't know if you can see it, but way in the background there, there's a field of corn surrounded by a fence. That field of corn, real or personal property, it's personal property, it's not real property, so it's not an appurtenance. But the fence around it would be an appurtenance. And how about the water? Well, water and water rights are real property, so that would be an appurtenance as well. So, let's talk about the tangible appurtenances. For example, buildings, trees, fences, sidewalks, any sewers, any improvement that man makes the property is considered to be an appurtenance to the land. Perennial plants, the landscaping that you install, that's real property as well, so would be an appurtenance. Perennial plants, plants that renew themselves year after year, are referred to as fructus naturalis, meaning fruits of nature. The term emblements which we'll define in a second, emblements are personal property. So what's an emblement? Well, an emblement has two definitions. The first one is a crop itself, like that field of corn or a field of cotton. The second one is the right of a tenant farmer to go on the land after the lease has expired to harvest his or her crop. So the crop itself is called fructus industrialis, meaning fruits of industry. So crops are personal property, not real property. And the term that we use to define them is emblements. And again, the right of a tenant farmer to go back on the land after expiration of the lease in order to harvest the crop because the crop took longer than expected, for example, to, uh, to mature. That right of that farmer is referred to as an emblement. So what are the intangible appurtenances? Well, for example, all the rights that go along with property, mineral rights, air rights, water rights, many of the rights and some more that we'll define in just a couple of minutes. How about easements? An easement can be in a, both an appurtenance and encumbrance. It depends upon your perspective. For example, if I have an easement across your property to enter and leave my property, that is a benefit to my property, and if I sell my property to a third party, that easement transfers along with it. So that easement is an appurtenance that I have to my property. Whereas if your property is the property across which the easement lies, that is a burden on your property. It's an encumbrance on your property. So to you, that easement is an encumbrance. It's not an appurtenance, but to me, it's a benefit, therefore it is a, an appurtenance which transfers with the property if and when I sell it. So there's a term that I want you to understand called the bundle of rights. And this term actually comes out of the Old English, uh, where back in medieval times when a, when a property might have been sold, all the villagers would come out uh, to witness this transfer of ownership. And the seller might pick up a handful of earth and pass it on to the buyer, signifying he or she was transferring the land. And then the seller would, would take a bundle of sticks and pass those sticks along to the buyer. And those sticks represented all the rights that went along with ownership, the right to sell the property, the right to possess it, the right to lease it, the right to plant crops, the right to hunt and fish on the property, and so on. 
So this concept of the bundle of rights arose out of this old English ceremony called, actually was called the livery of season, the transfer of ownership in other words. Uh, and today we still use this concept of the bundle of rights when we talk about different aspects of ownership. Here's, you know, this schematic is a little bit hard for you to see, but it's a cross section of a piece of earth and you can see there's water flowing through it, so some of the rights would be water rights. Above that would be air rights. There's uh, agricultural rights. Below the ground, there's mineral rights. Uh, over on the, on the right-hand side, there's development rights where those buildings are, and many, many, many other rights. Two of the terms I'd like you to be aware of, uh, the first one being riparian rights. The term riparian refers to water. And riparian rights are the rights that an owner might have next to a river or stream. So if you own property next to a river or a stream, in some states, not all states, uh, you may have the ability to use that water. Another term is littoral rights. And littoral rights refer to the zone between high water and low water where a property owner has property along a lake or the ocean. So in most instances, of course, the owner does not have rights to build or develop in that littoral zone, even though sometimes people do it, uh, sometimes mistakenly, uh, but it can pose some problems. So these two terms are ter terms you might hear, the term riparian rights dealing with water rights and littoral rights, rights that someone might or might not have uh, along a tidal zone. Now this term of pertinences uh, and the bundle of rights. Let's take just a quick look and name a number of these appurtenances. The trees and all the other plants, they're appurtenances. The house and other buildings are appurtenances. The fences and any other improvements. The water or water rights. The coal or mineral rights. Uh, the air rights. The right to lease the property. The right to sell the property, of course. And the last one I'll mention here is the right to will the property. Your right to pass your property along to your heirs is a very important right. In fact, how many of us would be willing to buy a property if we did not have the ability to will it? So all of these taken together, plus many more that I haven't listed here, are referred to as the bundle of rights, and they are all appurtenances to real property. What does that mean? It's something that's attached to the land, tangible or intangible, that would be transferred along with it. So that's our little discussion on appurtenances. Thanks for watching, and please remember to subscribe to our channel. You can do so by clicking the link. That way you'll be sure to get any immediate updates on any other videos that we post. Stay tuned.